So, hi everyone. Again, my name is Dmitry Buyanov and I'm the founder and CEO of Context VR. And my company focuses on, uh, on applications of virtual reality and augmented reality technology for business. There's a lot of hype around using virtual reality for, for games and entertainment purposes, but my passion is really about using virtual reality technology, advanced technology, to solve, seri uh, to solve serious problems in, in the real world. So, to address real-world problems in serious areas of human endeavor. So um, today I'd like to talk to you about a brief history of virtual reality. We're going to go over, you know, about how it got started. We're going to go over a couple of types of virtual reality experiences, which are really the main types that you need to think about. And uh, we're going to uh, uh, take a brief look at the virtual reality hardware ecosystem. and. Um, Ultimately, we will talk about the benefits of virtual reality. The big question, why is this all important for healthcare? Uh, then we're going to take a look at uh, some applications of virtual reality, and in particular, talk about how VR can be applied in a healthcare s setting. And then in the end, I think we'll do it in the afternoon, we'll, 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 we'll take, a look at, take a look at a couple of demos as part of your uh, personal protective equipment exercise, which is going to be in the afternoon. So. What is virtual reality? And virtual reality, uh, when you talk about virtual reality, you talk about computers. So VR is a simulated environment that, that consists of 3D models, 3D images, and, uh, or photos and videos that users experience through sensory stimuli, through vision, hearing, touch, maybe smell or taste, but we're not quite there yet. Um, in other words, it's a simulated 3D world that users can manipulate, and the, the actions of the user partially determine what happens in that world, so there's a feedback loop going on. And, and VR is also used as a colloquial term um, uh, to refer to devices and software that's used to create and access these environments. So uh, how did virtual reality get started? Uh, VR actually is not new at all. It got started decades ago. It was born in research labs and government facilities. And as first virtual reality devices appeared as early as 1960. So uh, there was a heavy vehicle simulation focus between then and around 1985, where NASA, airlines, and the military were focusing on simulating high altitude flight. Um, then there was a lot of hype around virtual reality around 1985. And then virtual rea reality appeared on the news. Some companies like Nintendo ship consumer-grade virtual reality hardware, known as Virtual Boy. But unfortunately, back then, ver uh, the hardware was not capable enough to provide the same degree of uh, immersion and um, graphical fidelity that's possible today. So back then, virtual reality was unfortunately didn't meet user expectations. And as a result, um, there was lower public interest after about 1985. And so, um, but then all of a sudden, virtual reality had a resurgence around 2012 when a little known company called Oculus VR, you probably heard about it, they uh, raised $2 million in Kickstarter. $2 million is a lot of money. And from what you know about Kickstarter, it's a crowdfunding website where people can fund their hobby or enthusiast projects. So it turns out there was actually a lot of demand from the enthusiast community for virtual reality technology. And so they raised $2 million and then fast forward to uh, 2014, which is just you know, a few years ago, a couple of years ago, that little known company was acquired by Facebook for a huge amount of money, $2 billion. So uh, this, is really, this was really the start of virtual reality as a new medium. Um, and today, uh, there's actually a bright and growing ecosystem of virtual reality devices um, consisting of offerings from a lot of different manufacturers. You can actually go online and buy a virtual reality headset today and have it shipped to your doorstep. Um, so how do you go from obscurity to this resurgence? What really, why did that happen? How did that happen? So, um, and the way I like to think about this is a couple of factors. So one factor is called presence. And presence was not really possible years ago. If you, if you take the Moore's law that states that you know, the capability of hardware kind of roughly doubles every year or so, um, back then, now your smartphone actually has more power than the mainframe computer of decades ago. And so presence 
um, is defined as a state of immersive awareness um, that makes the user feel as if they are in a virtual environment. And so it turns out that with the capabilities of hardware of the, uh, you know, a couple of decades ago, presence was not achievable, or maybe you know, people got a little bit of a sense of presence, but it was fleeting, and then it was only for a few seconds. They had this idea that they were you know, someplace else, but then um, today, presence is possible because of the advancements in technology. And the other um, factor is, big, huge factor is price, because um, back then, uh, virtual reality hardware was really, really expensive. You know, you were pushing the state of the art in computer processing and graphics, but still not quite achieving presence. Uh, today, virtual reality and presence is actually available through your smartphone. And um, again, as I said, virtual reality devices today are sold at consumer price points. So I want to briefly talk about a couple of main types of virtual reality experiences. So when your smartphone, everyone's got a smartphone these days, so there's this first type of VR experience. Um, it's a 360 photo or video. And that's that form factor, the mobile phone form factor, lends itself really well to these types of experiences. And uh, when we go through the demo, you really, you'll really understand what, what I'm referring to right now. But um, these are mostly non-interactive experiences where the user is stationary, and um, they're powered by less capable mobile device technology, like your smartphone that's in everyone's pocket right now. Um, and then, but it provides a lower graphical fidelity compared to a desk desktop computer. And then, as opposed to the other type of virtual reality experience called an immersive interactive three-dimensional simulation. Now we're really talking about the ability for the user to move around the space, to see a high degree of photorealism and a high degree of graphical fidelity. Um, this is powered by uh, more capable desktop computers. And then, again, provides higher graphical fidelity and high photorealism. And then um, it's more expensive, but then it's more powerful as well. And you'll see what I mean during the demo. So how is virtual reality access? I want to get into that because I think that's really important. I talked about the different types of experiences, but virtual reality of the past was accessed through something called computer, called caves, computer automated virtual environments where it's a projector system, usually a room. It's a projector system that costs hundreds of thousands of dollars. And then you don't have to wear anything, but you have some degree of immersion and uh, photorealism going on, and you can be uh, interacting with the virtual environment. So today, technology, that type of technology is much more accessible in the form of a head-mounted display that you put. It's, it's, a, it's a computer monitor that you literally wear on your head. It's lightweight, and so it provides a capability for you to access these virtual environments. Um, and so these are just some of the manufacturers that make uh, virtual reality headsets right now. You can actually buy one from these companies right now. Um, on the, and and th this is the PC form factor that I talked about, the high-end, high graphical fidelity, interactive type of experiences. The other one, the mobile, these are just a couple of examples of the mobile um, virtual reality hardware um, available on the market today. Um, and then um, I, I'm, I'm not going to go into detail about each one of these, but I want to talk briefly about the features because I think, I think it's important to understand different capabilities uh, before we get to the demo in the afternoon. So this is the HTC Vive, and it actually provides uh, a way for you to walk around the physical space and have your movement reflect one-to-one -one in the virtual space. I'm a big fan of this um, particular solution because it provides that additional capability of being able to move in the physical world and having your movements be reflected in the virtual world. The other one, um, we already talked about the Facebook acquisition, the Oculus Rift. Um, so. It's also a very similar device. It has a less of the walk around capability and provides more of a kind of a standing experience where you can stand in front of a computer, in front of a wall, and then 
you have some degree on you know movement you can move around a little bit but not 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 you don't have a room scale movement where you can actually use your own body as a controller um, Sony PlayStation VR is primarily a gaming headset so I don't want to I'm not going to talk too much about it, but it's very similar to the Oculus Rift and HTC Vive. Samsung Gear VR, I already talked about it. It's a mobile, fo mobile form factor virtual reality headset where you actually plug in your smartphone into this enclosure that you wear on your head. So you, you literally have a mobile device that you wear on your head. Uh, Google Cardboard, and actually by a show of hands, how many of you have tried VR before? One, two, so not too many people, okay. so. This is, this is a good intro. So Google Cardboard is, I think, uh, the most accessible way for you to experience virtual reality. And you'll see that in a demo in the afternoon. So you just, it's a piece of cardboard. You put your smartphone in and you have a way for you to view a virtual reality experience. It's lower fidelity, less interactive, and it's, but it's a great way to access 360 degree panoramic photos or videos. Okay, can I add it? It was free with the New York Times subscription. <laughs> there you go, yeah, there you go, low cost or even free. Um, last, last but not least, I, I, I want to talk about Microsoft HoloLens. It's a different take on virtual reality. It's something called mixed reality, where you're actually seeing the real world, but you're also seeing virtual objects superimposed on top of that world. I'll, I'll, I'll have a slide, I have a slide on virtual reality versus augmented reality versus mixed reality. So I'd like to briefly introduce these concepts because you'll hear that people talk about that. But you know, Microsoft HoloLens is a different type of device and I wanted to introduce it because it, it's, it's, it provides a capability that might be useful in a, in a healthcare setting as well. And this is another one. It's more of an augmented reality device, but you're also seeing virtual objects superimposed on top of the real world when you wear this device. By the way, if, you, if any, anyone has any questions, please feel free to interrupt me. So, um, This is what I wanted to talk about briefly. Um, the augmented and virtual reality spectrum. On the one hand, we have real environments. This is what I just talked about. You have a real environment. You wear a pair of glasses with see-through lenses and you see these 3D objects literally superimposed on top of what you see in the real world. On the other hand, you have virtual reality, complete virtual reality, where you're completely immersed, you don't see anything else, and this is just the virtual content that you're accessing, virtual content that you're seeing. But actually, stuff in between is also possible. You can have something called augmented virtuality and augmented reality. So it's a mix of things, and they're actually device offerings at all points in the spectrum. But um, I'll, I'll, I, I provided some links in this presentation that you're gonna have access to, so you know, when you're done with the course, I encourage you to go in, uh, online and check out some of these videos so that you can be more educated about these different offerings and hardware solutions and what's possible, what, what's the state of the art of virtual reality today. But I think this is the question that you've all been waiting for. Why is virtual reality important? And I think it's really important for, the, for, for several reasons. And one is that virtual reality has been called a transportation system for the senses. This ability of virtual reality to make the person feel like they're someplace else without physically traveling there, I think is really powerful. Now we're talking about collaboration, a really powerful way for researchers, academics, uh, industry professionals to collaborate with each other. Um, with virtual reality, you can safely simulate high-risk scenarios and high-risk procedures. And I think that aspect of virtual reality is really important for the healthcare industry because when you're talking about the theme of today is highly infectious diseases, viral agents. Uh, so if you can simulate uh, a high-risk scenario, high-risk procedure in virtual reality and use this as a training tool, I think that's where really the power of virtual reality comes in. And uh, you'll be able to get a glimpse of that during the demo in the afternoon. So another factor of virtual reality which I think is really important is that it minimizes distractions. When, you, when, when a, a modern learner 
Um, they learn online. They watch videos. They, you know, they access websites. But then when they're you know reading a book, reading some training materials, and going through a learning video, they might be distracted by something else. So virtual reality actually provides a way to minimize those distractions and make the person focus on the training content, which I think is a really powerful way to increase engagement. Um, and most importantly, virtual reality engages your spatial and muscle memory. When you feel like you're really a part of that virtual world that high, you know, highly mimics the real world, in the real world, you always engage your situational awareness, you engage your spatial memory, you engage your muscle memory. The same things are also possible in virtual reality. So imagine going through a training exercise in virtual reality and then when you face that situation in the real world, you are ready for it because you feel like you've, you've seen that before, you've done that before. And then industry experts across different markets call virtual reality the next big platform after mobile and the, and the internet. So it's really important to understand what it's like and then um, as you're, you know, I think one of the takeaways from this course could be if you could come back and think about how you could use virtual reality in your particular situation, in your particular job role, um, that would be that would be that would be a great exercise. So, I want to briefly talk about different applications of virtual reality. So, I put it first. Uh, the theme of today is healthcare. So, in healthcare, again, virtual reality can be used for training, for simulating high-risk procedures, uh, things like Ebola treatment, Ebola doctor training, nurse training patient triage where somebody can train to go through various situations before they face them in the real world, in the real world. Virtual reality is already used by, by different companies for psychological treatment, things like arachnophobia, agoraphobia, where you know people have, might have fear of heights um, so they can um, accustom themselves to those situations without facing that risk of a nervous breakdown in the real world. So they can safely do that in the comfort of their own home using a virtual reality headset. So um, I, 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 um, we had another course uh, before on safety training and um, virtual reality is a great tool for safety training. Again, referring to that uh, way for you to simulate high risk scenarios before you face them in the real world. Immersive education, a student of today can be in the classroom, but at the same time can be somewhere else, like on Mars, like in desert, like in different country. So it's a very powerful way for kids and anybody to engage into educational activities. You know, imagine going on a field trip from a classroom, but then actually feeling like you're visiting another country. I think that's a really powerful way to use virtual reality. Um, virtual reality is used in architecture and engineering to um, build structures before and, and make sure that they're built the right way, that there are no clashes between different systems. They, people do that virtually and walk through these buildings virtually before they spend a lot of money building physical structures. And last but not least, VR is used in games and entertainment. And this is actually right now where most of the innovation around virtual reality comes from. And, um, but what I'm really passionate about is using virtual reality in a serious setting. This is really, um, my, uh, my, this is really my passion. So um, again, I, mentioned, I already mentioned a few examples of enterprise and business uses of virtual reality, but today I wanted to talk about a few. I also wanted to mention a few more. So NASA has been using VR to train astronauts for 20 years. And they uh, very recently they started coming out publicly with this information. So they've been using it for remote robot control. I want to briefly mention the military applications of VR. Um, so immersive magical education. And you'll find some links later on in this presentation that are going to introduce you to these concepts again as well. Um, psychological problems and training professional athletes, training football uh, players. So. What about VR for healthcare? So um, I put these up, but what I want to briefly talk about is um, we are actually collaborating with Nancy and Rose, Nancy Simcox and Rose Fernandez, 
on uh, a project that uses virtual reality for developing hospital protocols. And you'll see a um, demonstration of an early prototype of that work in, in, in this afternoon. So it is a virtual reality simulation uh, that was captured using 360 degree camera technology. And then, uh, and then once these panoramic pictures are available, we superimpose additional information on top of those images so that that information can be accessed in the right spatial context by the person going through the training exercise. And you'll see exactly what I mean later on. Um, so um, we're, in particular here, we're referring to training for um, high-risk scenarios that where people have to deal with contagious diseases. If they can access, if they can learn in this, and access information in the spatial context before being faced with a dangerous situation in the real world, they train their pattern recognition so that they do the right thing later on. So um, I think we breezed through this pretty quickly and um, virtual reality demos are going to be in the afternoon. So we're going to go through a couple of de demonstrations. One is um, a walk around room, room scale virtual reality experience that's relevant to the healthcare industry. It's a surgery simulator. It's a game uh, about a surgical procedure, and it's a lot of fun. Another one is the, uh, what we're currently working on, which is the 360 degrees photos and videos with additional information superimposed on top of them. It's basically a mobile virtual reality application for healthcare training, for uh, training uh, people, uh, for training healthcare professionals who are going to be treating Ebola patients. And it's running on a smartphone with a Google Cardboard. So um, we went over, as a brief summary, we went over just, you know, introduction on the, of the concept of virtual reality and augmented reality, different types of virtual reality experiences. We took a look at the virtual reality hardware ecosystem, some benefits on VR, uh, the big question of why it's important. We've taken a look at some applications of virtual reality technology and then took a brief look at VR for healthcare training and then demos are coming in the afternoon. So um, with that, I'm gonna leave it up to you for, I'm gonna open up for any questions that you might have. We have one. Are there, are there already products out there that like if you were to purchase a virtual reality simulation system, you could actually purchase healthcare? I know for surgery, I think those ex exist, but thinking in terms of like triage scenarios or contagious disease scenarios, do they already exist or do you need to have someone that can program them? So it's a good question. I think your question might be twofold, but uh, in the second part of your question, I think, are you referring to hardware or software? Oh gosh, it's probably okay. software. So if software. I purchase if I purchase the hardware, yeah. is there also software that exists, or do yes. you have to so, program your own? Well, um, shameless plug, we provide that, but I, I don't want to I don't want to go too much into it um, because we we are you know this is a part of the course for educational purposes. But companies, different companies, provide virtual reality software for healthcare purposes, training tools or. Uh, simulation tools for different industries, yeah. but you can you can buy hardware right now and then uh, have somebody develop a uh, solution for your needs. Yes. Anybody else? So, people who tried VR before, did you tr did you try a? Low fidelity, 360 degree photo, video, or the high end? Which one did you try? Lower. Pardon? Lower? Lower. The, did you try the New York Times thing? No, I didn't. Okay, all right. There was somebody else. Did you try? What, what have you tried? I did the 20 minute video that was downloaded from New York Times. Oh, I see. So you've done the New York Times. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Anybody else have a question about virtual reality? What do you think is going to be more useful for health, or, or does it really depend on the situation? Of, because I think like augmented reality seems like it would definitely be advantageous when dealing with a patient, uh -huh. and then doing virtual reality, full 
ER for when doing a training scenario. Yes, that's a, that's a really good discussion. Yes, yes, so the question was that, um, I'll, I'll repeat the question. So he wanted to contrast augmented reality versus virtual reality and then which one would be more applicable in which setting. And so um, I think some people think about virtual reality versus augmented reality, but I think there's a place for each one. And when you, th when you talk about augmented reality, it's really a technology that's available for you to access information in real time when you're facing a patient in the real world. And so just like you said, uh, a real-time situation, real-time data access, that's a great use case for augmented reality or mixed reality technology. And virtual reality is really, you need to simulate the real world. You need to run a 3D simulation of the real world. And then, so it's a great training tool. And, and does this training tool, I mean, does it stop you? Does something flash and say, no, don't do that? Or you, yes. it's interactive? Yeah. It's, it can be interactive. It can, be, um, it can guide you through the experience. It can actually, there can be a virtual guide that uh, helps you learn. Or it can be as hands off, and then you're expected to know everything that you need to know as a test, for example. Yeah. And at the workshop, you're going to have that a little bit of that, yeah. yeah. I think people are... Okay. Can you have multiple people in the same scenario interacting together, or is it always a solo individual? This is a great question because I think the real power of virtual reality comes in when you have multiple people separated geographically collaborating in the same virtual environment. I think that's really where the power of VR comes in, where you can be, you can, you, you can be members of a virtual team. You can be here at the University of Washington. Maybe you have a counterpart in another university somewhere mid-state. But if you can be both in, in a part of the same VR environment, um, you don't have to have physical travel. Anyone else? All right, so with that, I'll leave it up to Thank Nancy. Thank you so much for having me over.